Um, wonderful. Okay, well, obviously, I mean, should we begin with each of you introducing yourselves and what you do? Because that's always quite a nice thing for people who don't know. So do you want to just say what you do? <laughs> sure. Um, my name is Samuel Loinberger. I'm this year's curator of the parkour section of Art Basel, the inner city uh, sculpture performance and happening event that happens in the old part of town. And I run uh, the off space, the project space, Salz. It's in a suburb of Basel, um, just a couple of miles from here, which I opened in 2009, and where I uh, run a program of uh, 8 to 12 shows uh, a year. My name is Chus Martinez, and I am a curator, and I am the head of the Art Institute at the um, FHMB, HGK, which is uh, the art school. And um, yeah, this year we open a show at the Tank, um, coinciding with the Art Basel by Mathilde Rossier, that also participated yesterday with two performances at the Parkour. And we have three students, or a group, more than three actually, students of us, bachelor doing a white cube hotel at Klingenthal, which I really recommend you to visit. And it's also like uh, actually a partly open or an open a project in the open space of the city of Basel. My name is Philipp Bischoff. I'm the head of cultural department of the city and country of Baselstadt. That means that I'm in charge of uh, the cultural politics of this area. Wonderful. Okay, um, I'm going to start a little bit first. Perhaps since we're here at Basel, I think parkour might be quite a good beginning because it's the most obvious case of something going on at the moment that also collaborates between public space and art. Do you want to tell me a little bit about how you're responding to space and what your choices are about this? And I'll ask you again, she's with the same question. So when you're working with something as a curator, how do, how, how do those thoughts come into what you do? Yes, I mean, uh, this is now the seventh edition of Parkour. It was uh, previously curated by Florence Derieux and Jens Hoffmann, who were both based uh, outside of Switzerland when they curated the project. So for me, it um, was quite an advantage, so to speak, to be able to work on this public art uh, exhibition project from within Basel. Um, since I grew up here and I work here, um, I was able to really probably spend more time with the different locations and work with them in, in, a, in, a, in a more um, intense manner, so to speak. Um, before I even started the project, for example, I also met with uh, Philip Bischoff and I asked, you know, what sort of uh, expectations there might be from uh, the city of Basel, you know, since it's involving so many different departments, since it addresses so many sometimes uh, sensible issues, also because you enter the private realm and you private uh, the private homes and gardens of people, besides the public and uh, and the city departments. So I mean, uh, before you actually know what you get in regard to the projects from the galleries that apply. Um, it was just really important to me to see what rooms are available and, and how you can make the kind of perfect match for, uh, between project and, uh, and, and space. And for this, I mean, um, I really still depend, the same way I depend in the, in the project space I run and how every space should be running is, is you know, on, 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 on site visits, artists that come by and you really take a walk through town, you stroll through town, you get to know the city together, you see what the options are, and then you, you start narrowing down what, what, what might work for them. Yeah, yeah, I think, well, first of all, I do think that every exhibition is an exhibition in public space. So um, we always talk about public space as different from the institutional space or the space that you are accustomed to go when you are going to see um, an exhibition, but actually there is no such a thing because we have plenty of different spaces which are public in different natures or in different categories. And I think that it's very, very important to understand also how this pr produces an ecology. So it's really not um, different from, but in coexistence with. So every time that you circulate, you circulate through a space that perhaps is more familiar, but then you encounter, like in this year, parkour, other spaces of the city of Basel that perhaps during the art visit you would not go and parkour allow you exactly this kind of um, you know coming to terms with a different institution with a different site with a different um, perception or experience of the of the street and so on and so forth so I think that 
um, the totality is what interests me, not the fraction of seeing open versus closed, because everything is open, even if there is spaces with and spaces without walls. And what is really important, I agree with uh, Samuel, and I think this year has really been very successful, so I use it publicly to congratulate you, um, in, in exactly doing that, in studying the site, in making a commission that is sensitive towards both, uh, what the artist wants, but also what the people can experience in that particular space. And I think this is, this is true for every space. Um, Philippe, I'm going to ask you a question. Normally, and I think Basel is quite an unusual place in terms of the rep how a city collaborates with artwork basically because of Art Basel. But most of the time when you're doing work within the civic space, you're often dealing with a lot of limitations in terms of demands within, like, whatever your social demands are, or, or limitations or kind of work that can be shown. Are there certain limitations that you find? or you do you, Is there a reason why you're a little bit more open, than, than, say, than other cities? I don't know whether Basel is more open than other cities. We don't, shouldn't forget that Art Basel is a very special moment. So this opens doors, that's the first thing. And then what Chu said, uh, the way Samuel approached the whole parkour idea was very, um, very sensitive and very interesting because he had no prejudice. That's what I felt when he met me to talk about and that's what I heard from museum directors and other people. So I think first of all, it's the way you approach um, those people who have fears or don't, don't know what it should mean. And then on the other hand, it is a fact that in Basel, culture and art specifically has a very, very extreme meaning. So people are open to, they like to see it, and um, they, they have understood that the public space also is an art space. And that's, that's the beauty about this. And for me personally, I can really um, just confirm what Chu's and also Sama was saying, um, it's about the city as an entire, um, as a puzzle, you can say, and that's, that's what is very beautiful in this year. Um, can we talk a little bit about audience and your feelings about what kind of audience you're directing work at? Because it's much broader than necessarily people within an art audience when you're placing things outside a normal gallery context. Well, I mean, does that change what you look for, or, or how are you addressing the work with the concept of that? Well, I mean, the... Um we're, so to speak, with Art Basel in the, in the lion's den in a lot of people's, uh, uh, from a lot of people's perspectives. And so we're in a, in a very concentrated, highly commercial context. And uh, now in my case, particularly coming from the off-space scene, it was very important that uh, um, we're not just catering parkour to an international um, public and uh, not just to the international collectors. Um, and obviously it's addressing the regional and the local and uh, the people from Basel as well. And um, parkour has the luxury that it's, it's at this point, at, at least this year, uh, we tried, I tried to really um, bridge all the different connections because we have on the one hand the international main positions and then we have Parkour Night, which uh, Floros Derio last year already extended to a couple of museums, like the Tangley Museum and the Heck, to collaborate with them. And I thought it was a, a great gesture. And uh, I, I really wanted to continue this. This is why also beyond a, a, a museum institution, it was really interesting to collaborate with the Art School of Basel and uh, maybe with, uh, with an institution from abroad, like a raw material company, but uh, its curator, Koyo Kuyo, is based in Basel often. And um, so to have also the, the local institutions present, but on top of this now, um, this year I, uh, I started Parkour Bar, which, I, um, which was a place to meet each other and to have a drink before or after parkour, but it gave, I invited for every evening of the week uh, an off space of Basel, a non-for-profit space, to present a program. And I think this was uh, the last thing that was kind of missing in the puzzle, at least from my perspective, because um, to a lot of the, the, especially the young art scene, Art Basel is kind of the, the enemy, you know, in a lot of ways. Manifest and is the same in Zurich, I think. So, yes. So, you know, I was, I was a bit uh, between, uh, how you say in German, between Stuhl und Benke gefallen, between... There's an, uh, you a rock and a hard place, I would imagine, it's the British yeah. <laughs> Yes. So, I know, I just wanted to make, make sure that the, uh, the key local art scene, which obviously that's where, where all the talents grow out of eventually, hopefully, 
um, are, are equally, equally represented in a scene where uh, the inter international art cred comes through. And uh, it was an attempt to, yeah. Do you think that's something that's successful? Or do you feel some of that tension between that art school background and these kind of opportunities within something like Basel or, or these are places? Yes, I think, of course, and it should be. So there is no way in saying that we should erase it. It should be a tension. Definitely the interests that the, the different uh, groups um, represent are different, and they should remain different at a certain extent. But difference does not mean that you cannot coexist or work together. It only means that, um, yeah, there is uh, different values and different objectives, also because we are dealing mostly uh, with education. But coming back to the question of audience, I think that it's very important um, again and again to talk about it, not in, in the sense of numbers. I think it's really not very important to see how many people go to or how many people transit, but actually if we can or cannot motivate different people to go or um, how to reach a different audience. And actually, for example, I'm always frustrated to see in some open performances like yesterday night a lot of people, but for me still not enough of the youngest that I would like to um, join us in seeing this kind of performance. And, uh, and many other audiences that actually they do have an interest but still don't know how to get motivated to enter. So all these questions, or for example, um, in, in the art school, I think Samuel uh, mentioned the collaboration with HEC or, or with us. And we are in the campus at Dreispitz and we always say that um, the team and also the students, they, they are trying to open up and uh, produce exhibitions that everyone is invited. But the invitation is surely not enough to make you unmotivated you to go to the other side of the city, even if the city is very small, and perhaps join an opening or a night. So to, to just make you aware of these possibilities and that actually you as an audience, we are not serving, servicing only, but you are kind of co-responsible of those spaces existing is also very important. So to challenge the language, I think it's not about having plenty of people. It's about those people understanding that they are super necessary to maintain an ecology of spaces and to make them active in different ways. So th this is for me fundamental. Um, I'm also very, in, I mean, one of the things that really stuck with the title of this talk was the idea of civic and art collaboration. And I find that quite an interesting thing, maybe because I've always, in my mind, seen it less of a collaborative process and perhaps maybe more of an antagonistic one or a resistant one or, or maybe my concept of what civic is is a little bit limited. And maybe that's because I'm from London, I don't know. Um, how would you see that word collaboration forming? Do you feel that there is a collaboration between both aspects of, let's say, what you do and what you both do? Well, I hope so, but this, this um, idea of collaboration is not existing. You have to create and recreate it all the time. And um, starting from the definition of what plays are, what their role is, what the situation is, you always have to find new paths, how to, how to find collaborations. And for me, for instance, I can just give one example, talking again about the parkour, what is one of the, for me, most beautiful moments, what is happening in the, in the Antique Museum, in the Music for Antique uh, History, where Samuel put one artwork and and to see how many people and what kind of people all of a sudden go in there and to see the the guard of the museum smiling in the evening because he has never had that much people and that kind of people this is something that is not obvious but when you see it it becomes obvious but it's because they did it and this kind of finding the the chains and the links and the bridges is is something um, that is hard work but it's do makeable so for me, it's, it's all about um, opening up and um, um, kind of killing prejudices that say it's not possible or it's not a possible partner for us. And that's one of my jobs as Jews and as Samuels to work on this again and again. Um, thinking about the work that you've done and seen in general, can you tell me examples of works where you feel that's the most successful example of that kind of collaboration? and which is the least kind of successful and why? Because I'm always very interested in like finding new paths of projects that work and I'm trying to work out why they make sense. 
Well, I can maybe just start, um, but I cannot explain why it, why it is what, what I describe. I'm here for five and a half years now. And I um, never forget when in the beginning it was the talk about Art Basel. What he said, it's a kind of enemy in the art scene um, and how this has changed now. You see that the younger scene jumps on this opportunity of presenting itself, of collaborating, of searching also for opposition, opposing moments choose is very important in this to really bring people to collaborate and to attack it so um, I think it's it depends on the actors on the personalities that's absolutely the, the the secret all the rest can be concept or strategy but what you need is people who really believe in this and who say come come in or who go to and try to so uh, the the most successful example for me always is people meeting it's very simple but that's how it is I don't know how you see it but I think it, it really depends in every context. I must say, I think I'm only here since two years. And the um, atmosphere, first of all, collaboration is something that has many aspects. On the one hand, people tend to understand that you need to collaborate in, um, if you are equal. And I really believe in non-equal non scale collaboration. So to collaborate with different scales and with different natures. Um, and this is something that we need to honor artists because artists are the ones that normally initiated that. So now we see a performance, an intervention in the Antique Museum, perhaps 15 years from now. We were not that accustomed to see that, but artists initiated that opening up the collection, seeing that actually we need to transit spaces where art has been exhibited or even, not even art, but other cultural materials had been exhibited and how you actually need to get accustomed to go with a natural way from one to the next and actually they force collaboration. So that was not that natural in the institutional level. So it became natural because artists wanted it. So that's, I think, very important to stress. Um, the second thing is that every city has its own uh, institutional ecology or its own art ecology. Um, not all of them are the same. So I remember that uh, when I was living in Barcelona, it was extremely difficult to collaborate and everyone says yes we would love to collaborate and then it did actually never happened. So I did not have any fiasco because I did not have any opportunity. It was absolutely impossible because people were completely afraid of losing the territory. So the institutional idea of the you know the big metaphor of the pie and the cake and who is getting the cake and blah 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 so you know that was absolutely stupid but absolutely true it was working. So nobody wanted to share that metaphorical cake. Um, in Bilbao, where I was working for five years, it was completely the dif a different case. Um, when I was appointed director of an art space in Bilbao, the journalist told me it's going to be impossible because there's the big giant, the Guggenheim, and they are never going to collaborate with you. They are going to annihilate all of spaces. So I gave a call to the director of the Guggenheim and said, like, are we going to collaborate? And then he said, are you free for dinner? And then I say, I am, and we collaborate. So it really depends on personalities and, and how you understand the dynamic of a certain um, institutional life. And I think the case of Basel is it's like Bilbao. It's possible, but it's because people wanted to make it possible. Nobody feels that there is a problem if uh, we go into the territories of others. But this needs to be cultivated, it needs to be trained. It can break any moment. It's a very, you know, it's something that you need to rehearse again and again, otherwise uh, it disappears. Well, I'd love to ask you quickly a question. Yeah, feel free. Um, no, just your, your experience from civic art um, projects, collaborations coming from London, and uh, how is it working in Zurich? At Manifesta. Well, I mean, I mean, obviously, my, my role with with Manifesta is very limited to historical work, so I'm largely within the institutions. However, I was amazed that I've been given over the Migros Museum, the Luma Foundation, the Kunsthalle Zurich, who've never all worked together, though they are within the same building and Helmhaus. So that's been quite fascinating. Um, in terms of the wider collaboration, it's huge because very much like the main body of new commissions, these 30 new commissions are with people from totally different professions and jobs across the city doing it as, on a, as volunteers, doing these collaborative or responsive works. And I think it's been quite interesting for those specific individuals and also very difficult because no matter, because no matter what, you're not going to know what the expectations are. But in terms of a city, I think, I mean, I'm, I'm, at least from my own experience, I've been really stunned at the opportunity 
and like openness that we've given. I personally am a little frustrated that there wasn't more involvement of offsite spaces and maybe that I would have done that differently, but I didn't curate it on my own um, because I think that's exceptionally important because you want, isn't the point of something like a biennial or an art fair us coming into a space and you don't want to be like, hi, we know how to do this. It doesn't really work like that. You want to be pointing the finger to other creative projects within the city, which is kind of, I mean, isn't that the point of doing art projects in general? I mean, that's my feeling. There you go. With all that, can I ask you a little bit about politics? Because I think if we're talking about the relationship between the civic and art, the political really comes in. And obviously the changing governmental roles and what that government is and how, if you're right wing or you're left wing or whatever specific city mayors, et cetera, and how that's influencing your opportunities and limitations and approaches. Do you feel Let's say, Samuel, I'll start with you because you've done salts for a long time here as well. Do you, have you noticed like changes with different political, governmental experience, et cetera? Um, well, it's interesting. I, I lived before I got to Basel, to Beersfeld. And, um, I lived in Zurich for seven years and before in London. And so I kind of, um, art, art scene wise, one could say I went from like a very internet, I, I arrived in London in the mid 90s. Uh, just at the height of the YBA <laughs> movement, so to speak, and then I uh, went to Zurich and was involved there in different uh, places. And uh, it was interesting now to see how long it took to uh, establish my space. I mean, um, you know, the first two years where I ran my space, um, I basically had uh, the public coming from Zurich and other places. So our network, our personal network that we knew, it took, it took two years for the Basel crowd to come the first time to, to the openings here. And it's interesting now after six, seven years that uh, the circle is going further and further into the local community. And even now in Biersfelden where I, I have the space, um, yeah, it's just interesting that you sometimes have to start on the outside layer and work yourself inwards, which makes sense. And that often the, the, the very, very local support, you know, Comes, comes then at a later stage. So it was interesting to actually see this different, uh, yeah, I mean, I could kind of watch or to try to watch the perception kind of changing I mean, I'd say and coming, and then Coming from London in the mid nineties, I will say that I'm personally very aware of the limitations that art has within public space, partly because of commercial interest, as well as political Lack of education, should we phrase it that way? Maybe a resistance to the cultural in certain ways, unless it's in a, a nice, rather twee package. It's sort of like you, they want to reach as wide an audience as possible. This is why you have so many cities with those cows or the bears or whatever, or an egg painted, and that's their idea of public art. So I'm, yeah, no, I'm, I'm much more aware of that kind of political, commercial, resistant layer and who owns space. And I, I, I'm curious if you find that's something that's not coming up, I'm, I'm quite... Yeah, but I think political awareness is fundamental. Um, why Bilbao was so successful was the way that they structure funding. I think they produce some sort of an institute for contemporary art, and the way that, they, uh, that artists and institutions could apply for funding was, um, was very telling. So they were actually um, encouraging not only, um, you know, first of all, if you are talking about the public space as the outside space, or if you are talking about collaborations, um, there is two ways of looking at it. Some politicians uh, when, or some funding bodies, doesn't matter if it is public or private or semi-private, they think that collaboration is saving money. But actually, um, this way of thinking is the wrong way of thinking. So people encourage collaborations because they think that somehow in the merging, exactly the same as when they are talking about banking or retail, um, you're going to save some money. Like something is going to cost less in the collaboration. It could be the marketing, it could be that you use less people, whatever. Um, but it was very interesting how in Bilbao they were thinking that actually collaboration meant a different money scale. That it meant actually breaking a scale, the scale of the active working institutions, to just break it differently. And that would actually cost a little bit more, but it would reach more and it would activate differently. And they were ready to actually uh, finance groups of people and not 
only individuals, and that they are actually did think tanks um, to make people meet so that uh, some groups of people could work together and ask for particular money for programming. So all of that plays a fundamental role. So that makes, of course, the whole ecology of the city a complete different one. Well, important about collaboration, exactly as Choose is, is um, saying, is not about saving money or whatever. It's about doubling or increasing power, intellectual power, also manpower, um, also financial power. What is interesting, because when you bring in more partners, you can get more money. But for me, the most important thing is really this, this um, enlargement of intellectual power, what makes um, collaboration so interesting and beautiful. And um, maybe one interesting point, because I'm working in politics, is the tension between, let's call it a city program, marketing and whatever, and a certain spirit of liberty. And that's this tension every city in Europe knows, and uh, not only in Europe. And there, um, I can only say that Basel is quite relaxed, what is very good. So it's not this strict programming. That's how we want Basel. That's what Basel should be, even though there is a clear program, and it, it should be a cultural city, a touristic city, and so on, so on. But this, this for me, is a secret at the moment that this tension is, is not too heavy between what the city wants, how it wa should be controlled, and what it, it, it leaves open. I don't know how Samuel experienced it, but I think it's quite astonishing what is possible if you try it. And uh, pol pol politics, in that sense, um, can really define the frame and open it or uh, make it closer. And the more defined the program is, the more difficult it is for the artists, I would say. Um, no, yeah. I would just like to add that for me, another problematic aspect of collaboration is that by definition, since the early 90s, collaboration means normally another way of boosting production. So it is, and it is important to talk about production and producing more artworks and more matter, if you want. But um, given the current situation, um, I think that it's fundamental to talk also differently about how to collaborate by just bringing people together, So, which is much more invisible, uh, much less monumental. And um, everyone is asking me these days, like, how does Basel look when nobody's here? Nobody means when the artistic community or the international artistic community is not here. And this is a very important question, because at the end of the day, if there is a way of collaborating, is that we should collaborate to break even during the year and bring more people together. So we have enough. Um, we have another space, and it would be really important to talk about exactly that, transit as collaboration, meeting as collaboration, um, seeing each other, working with each other, having time for each other as collaboration, and not only production, like doing something together which is, at the end, resulting into something. And that's exactly that, the general cost of operation, the people, what they cost, that is very difficult to fund because, you know, it's not as sexy as paying for sculpture or a video or even a performance. It's exactly that point that I think is crucial. And also we're in Switzerland where I feel the word money comes up quite often, or at least certainly in Zurich it's been exceptionally difficult working within those limitations and things that would cost a certain thing in some city are three times as much in Switzerland. So I found even just on a personal level curating here very difficult because of so many more costs than I would incur somewhere else. So I feel like, yeah, I'm very curious to see how that how you overcome those situations is really interesting to me. Of course. <laughs> just about. Um, it's about the cost of parkour. It isn't cheap. Um, can I ask you a little bit about, have you ever been told no, or have you ever said no, or have you ever been told no for projects that you've wanted to do within public space? Sure, this happens um, every year. Different times, the projects are not makeable because of regulations, limitations, because there is too many uh, events. We, for instance, we have a slight problem with public play, with the squares, because there is two you can really use for cultural content, and there is an overload on this, those two squares, so you cannot allow everything to happen. That's normal. I mean, sometimes it's very sad, sometimes not. But um, yes, this happens. We cannot allow everything, but that's part of the game in a way. Are there any other reasons to say no apart from like the location um, of space? Yeah, that's, that's a good question. I mean, 
we try not to charge the quality as a state. You know, how do you charge the quality of a, of a cultural event um, having place in the public space? That's really extremely difficult. So we try the partners to decide or to have a situation which partners decide. And usually I think that a good or interesting or, or um, demanding projects, they can, um, they can be realized. But um, I, I'm not a board or I'm not a jury saying this is a good project and this is a bad project. Me not personally, not my, my collaborators. So um, from that side, no, we don't say yes or no. But it, there is um, in, in, in the board that is um, deciding about the permissions, there is a certain checklist, but never a quality checklist. This is not our, uh, our part. Have you ever done projects where you've not been able to realize them? Yes. In Switzerland. <laughs> no, um, yes, once. Um, I, I actually wanted to fund something when I arrived, and it was impossible to convince anybody to do that. But I'm talking about funding bodies. I'm not talking about the city of Basel. But um, yeah, I did two, two ideas, and it was impossible to convey them to. Um, there's many reasons. One is because we are publicly funded, and then it's very difficult to convince uh, Swiss uh, foundations to help us, the art school, to, to go on top of it and to overcome actually our general cost go in teaching. So that's the only thing that, that we get paid. So that has been very difficult and it's a surprise that almost all the funding bodies that help us to do these kind of collabor collaborative projects are foreign foundations. So that hurts, I must say. But um, yeah, that's something that is ahead of me. So I need to convince also the Swiss foundations to uh, to invest in these kind of things. And then I, I proposed something, but they thought I was completely crazy, and now I'm doing it in, in Bombay in November. So the, 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 <laughs> Indians, the Indians understood it. Oh, you, Samuel, have you ever had things that haven't happened? Well, I mean, uh, I think now during parkour, one of the most uh, asked questions is always like, why can we keep some of these great installations up all summer or a few, few months later for the general public? Because why not? Huh? Why not? Well, I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> no, because it's obviously just the same duration as the art fair, and most works get brought by the galleries that need to be shipped back. And I mean, now with the example of the Antiquities Museum and the Jim Dine installation, we have the first example where the museum uh, was so um, excited and fascinated by the installation that they offered to keep it on until the end of August. So we kind of cracked there a little uh, milestone in also the openness of the institution, because obviously... Um, um, it means there's more cost, more security, more, everybody's, you know, suddenly the shift from the commercial and the, the, the cost uh, responsibility of the gallery, who is mainly paying for the production and the shipping of the work at the parkour, and, and then afterwards Art Basel who pays the whole infrastructure and all the, all the other things. Um, one day more means you're shifting responsibility to somebody else, you know, and, uh, a lot of the projects, a lot of the 19 projects right now in town, quite a few of them could stay around, you know? But then this is something that you'd have to discuss with city officials, with other people, you know, because suddenly then you're asking other people to open up their wallets, and then it gets complicated. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I mean, the goal is, that it's not, with me it's less a question of what didn't work yet, because I'm depending on, on especially with this project, on, on, on the galleries but the potential to actually open up and make it a, a, a bigger project, a more citywide project, is something then that many more um, departments will have to speak and, speak and get their heads together. Um. Well, sometimes it's very simply a question of time. I mean, I think someone came to see me almost one year ago for 19 or 18 positions. So imagine it's 30 and it takes, as he's describing for this one museum, longer to have them there. It takes more time to prepare, to talk, to discuss. So uh, the resource of time is very important in this. Um, Frank, has anyone got any questions while we're here? Yeah, you at the back? Got one? Uh, congratulations on extending the piece to August. I think that's great. But from a Basel um, native point of view, I mean, I look at it from an inter international art tourist point of view, sort of like a documenter or a manifesta. You know, we all descend on these events, and the numbers and the visitors are really good for tourism and good for economy. And they're, they're events that are separate outside of a commercial art fair. 
So I wondered, is it the galleries that pay for parkour? Is it the city? And is the target to help the locals get engaged in Basel in a way that they can afford? Or what's the... It's not really a Nuit Blanche. It's not really an unlimited. I'm just trying to understand from your perspective, besides the Basel visitors, what you're trying to give Basel. Well, I think it's uh, quite simple. I think uh, being able to encounter art in a, in a normal daily life environment is really the way you're supposed to encounter art. I mean, here we're in a sales venue. Unlimited is really kind of a place where you can show how complex and big a project can get. But um, inside the city, I think it's, it's really wonderful to actually get the cross-section of public that isn't necessarily the international um, art crowd um, and to maybe get somebody excited in, uh, of art or to discover an older position like Jim Dine that some people might not know and uh, open a discussion of suddenly what it means to have this classically inspired installation happening in the Antiquities Museum. It opened suddenly. Uh, I, gave, I gave a private tour yesterday to some families and friends and you know, a lot of my friends who are, uh, have families and kids in Basel were the first time in the Antiquities Museum. And they were like, we should go back here again. And uh, this is the sort of uh, exciting moment that can live on afterwards. I mean, to answer your question that you asked at the beginning, um, how does parkour work? It works very similar to Unlimited. I mean, it means galleries who are in the main fair are eligible to apply with a project. And as in uh, Unlimited, they, are, um, they have to pay for um, production and shipping, installation, deinstallation. But Parkour is still a, a heavily uh, subsidized and supported project from Art Basel itself. I mean, it's, a, it's, it's really something that, um, yeah, that is still being supported way beyond what the galleries can finance. And that's where also the challenge lies, because it's, it's, it's still a very free curatorial project. And in a lot of uh, galleries' uh, perspective, it's, it's not commercial enough. And so it's, it's an interesting um, way for me to try to make it, on the one hand, more interesting to the galleries, because they can really show how their artists can show their full potential in an environment, like right now with uh, the Natural History Museum, Trisha Baga, an American multimedia artist, um, occupied two, two rooms and was able to loan uh, taxidermic species, animals from the collection and was really uh, able to make an immersive environment. And I think that's when the real magic happens um, and then that's when these different layers come together. I mean, I have to say, I actually kind of stole your model when I was curating Manifesta, because I've, I used Basel when I put this together, and very much because we had a very limited budget to put together our show. So I, would, I, I think for the first time of the biennial, I collaborated a lot with galleries, getting them to support things like shipping, because we needed it so we could put together a show. And I used the leverage of being near this fair as a way of going, we're next door, it's on for the summer, it's a great way of showing how your artist's work can be placed in a wider context and kind of showcasing them at a very timely moment. So I actually, I stole that. But it's, I'm quite surprised that most biennials don't function like this and they seem to depend more on institutional loans. But yeah, Well, they do, but it's also problematic because if you start doing that in biennials, you are also kind of um, badly training the funding bodies. Because if you get absolutely subsidized by these galleries and then you start doing that, the next time that you're asked for money for somebody that has no gallery, the city is going to send you, you know, to the galleries. And that's exactly, that's a problem. So, of course, in Documenta, when we were doing it, we asked for support. But it's, it needs to be, I think, impressively discreet. Because the, there is, I think, the question of the responsibility of the money. It's not only about how much money, but who is responsible for that. Otherwise, you don't preserve a certain ecology. And I think that's fundamental, not to be completely eaten by the market. So. And commercial interest and context, I understand that. 
I can maybe answer to your question from the point of view of the city, as we are not paying for it at all. We, we don't have intentions, but just interest. And uh, one interest is the one to give a wider access to, to art in public space, what is very important. And the other thing, what is the beauty of this parkour idea for me is to have the city discovered or corners and spots of the city discovered by people that maybe would only go to museums to to the to the art fair and so on so that's our interest but um, it's a merely um, on 100 percent private initiative can i ask you are there any spaces from all of you living in the city that you haven't had seen used that you'd like to use because i mean let's say let's say i loved last year when you had the harun meza show layered on top of the tongli museum i think it's one of the best shows i've ever seen because it was amazing seeing a contemporary artist kind of reinvent an older artist's work and make a space seem different and i'd never been to the tongli museum tingly tingly tongli i don't know how to say it tingly um uh, which sounds very funny in english um so yeah so that was really fascinating to me and again it took me to a site that i wouldn't necessarily have visited otherwise so are there other spaces that you haven't used and you think oh, i want that well i would dream of a, of a huge project in the harbor and even better in the three nations, Germany, Switzerland, France. This would be for me personally a big, big dream. I know it's hard work, you can do it in some years. <laughs> but um, no, this would be interesting because, um, as you know, Basel is very close to, to France and Germany. And this idea of a, of a three country area, what is also an important topic nowadays when countries are closing, this for me would be very beautiful to discover. Yeah, I think for me it's always, I think, not for Art Basel, but in general, to move away from the symbolic centers and try to be aware of other spaces in the city, perhaps less, less privileged. Um, that's also fundamental. Or even semi-private spaces, you know, studios of local artists, uh, places that you perhaps don't think about, but they are like uh, very important in producing the ecology of the city. Well, yes, I just worked through a, a bunch of very interesting spaces that I was very keen to, to open up. And so in parkour, was, we were very lucky to have, um, to have been welcomed with open arms. And they also have a couple private uh, venues, private gardens and courtyards opened up to the public. The sort of places that you walk by all your life when you grew up here and wonder what's behind it. And uh, so for me, Obviously, this is what I'm working on, always finding a new place, so it's, it's good. I'm going to say there's one last question. Yeah, sorry. My name is Anders Maudig. I'm a freelance journalist here in Basel. And now you're talking a lot about uh, temporary or semi-temporary semi installations. And so I'm wondering how these recently opened doors will affect future permanent commissions of art in the city. Hard to say, I mean, this question could go to me. Um, we are funding uh, art in public space regularly, and uh, we know that it's pretty complicated and difficult for many reasons. I cannot explain it all now, but um, I always believe in, in the power of experience. So I hope that the good examples of this parkour and other moments can, um, can encourage people to um, be more open for um, projects but this is um, this is the future i don't know we are working on it and um, for me this is what is very helpful in this parkour that people from basel can see what it can bring to the city when you have this artwork in the city okay then i'm going to say thank you very very much for coming samuel juice thank you